Bishop and martyr Ignatius of Antioch. We refer to Saint Ignatius as not only a father of the church but an apostolic father. And what we mean by father of the church is that there is a group of of men who lived in proximity to the time of the apostles who were saints, who were orthodox in their beliefs and who whose writing, whose theology that was left behind in the form of writings and epistles and treatises are particularly important for our understanding of the teaching of Jesus as it was handed on through the apostles. There are others that we call ecclesiastical writers such as Tertullian and Origen who are not saints but whose teaching uh, during their at least orthodox periods uh, is significant because it indicates to us what the church has always believed. Among these fathers of the church, there are several of them that are referred to as apostolic fathers. Uh, and St. Ignatius is one of them. There's also Clement of Rome and uh, St. Polycarp, who lived in within a hundred years of the death of the last apostle, St. John. And, and in this case, St. Ignatius was actually a disciple of St. John, so they're particularly noteworthy because they were the more or less the immediate successors of the apostles and and represent in a very um, profound way uh, what the apostles actually taught and in the case of saint ignatius of antioch we find uh, the teaching on the eucharist and uh, the primacy of the bishop of rome and of bishops generally the priesthood so many uh, very uh, fundamental beliefs of the catholic faith that uh, Protestants deny are found uh, in the immediate successors of the apostles in their writings. So their testimony, and in, in particular St. Ignatius of Antioch's testimony, is particularly important. Um, but we also learn from St. Ignatius in particular what the life of a saint was like in the early church. Because St. Ignatius was the bishop of Antioch, Smyrna, and um, he uh, was a martyr for the faith, and he recorded his uh, not only faith in the church, but also his love for Jesus Christ and his willingness to die for him in his uh, letters that he left behind. These, I think there's five letters, and the, probably the most famous is the one that he wrote to the Romans, in which uh, he was sending this missive to them uh, while he was on his way to Rome to die a martyr. And he wanted this uh, letter to get to, to them before he arrived because he wanted them to support him in his uh, cause, which was not to be delivered from martyrdom, but rather to, um, to be left to his destiny. He didn't want the Romans to intervene and prevent his martyrdom. The Roman Christians, he wanted them to uh, support him by his by their prayers and and uh, encourage him to remain faithful even to the end to the point where he actually said that uh, if the the lions the beasts in the arena did not come to devour him he would t he would coax them on he would aggravate them so that they would come to him and and devour him his desire was to be with Christ he says I am the wheat of God and my destiny is to be ground by the teeth of beasts so that I can become uh, God's bread, which of course is uh, a very direct reference to the Eucharist. <clears throat> and the reading from uh, St. John's Gospel today about the grain of wheat falling to the ground and dying, uh, that that's necessary, our Lord says, otherwise it cannot bear fruit. Uh, also, you know, it's a kind of prefigurement of the Eucharist because not only does the grain of wheat, must, must it die in order for it to become 
uh, fruitful, but also the grain of wheat in making bread must be ground and destroyed in order for it to become uh, the pure bread of Christ. And uh, in the Western Church, we, we retain the custom of uh, unleavened bread because of that uh, idea of purity and because both our Lord when he speaks of the leaven of the Pharisees and St. Paul when he talks about the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth as opposed to the leavened bread of, of malice and wickedness, uh, that uh, unleavened bread signifies uh, purity. And this is something that St. Ignatius loved, desired, and committed himself to, to and was given the grace to um, exemplify in an extraordinary way, in a, really in a miraculous way. He was so filled with the grace of God and his love that he, he longed to offer his life for Christ. He longed to live the mystery of the Eucharist. We are not only called to adore our Lord in the mystery of his body, blood, soul, and divinity present in the Eucharist, but we're called to imitate what we witness and what we experience and what we receive in the Eucharist. Jesus uh, sheds the glory of his divinity to become a man and then he even in a sense sheds the, 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 the visibility of his humanity in order to become our food and he allows us to consume him so that we might become transformed uh, into him and the bread is is broken and divided though our Lord remains undivided but that brokenness uh, signifies to us the willingness of Christ uh, to be to be crushed and to be made the bread of God for our salvation and so we we return the gift we try to take what we have received from the Lord and turn it back to him by offering ourselves to him and most of us will not have the opportunity probably or who knows in the day and age we live in to offer ourselves the way Saint Ignatius did but we're all called to make the offering and that's in fact what we do every time we come to the holy sacrifice of the mass it's the central mystery that we participate in we are called to offer a sacrifice to God. First of all, we offer Jesus to his heavenly Father in the Eucharist through the sacrifice and our reception of Holy Communion. But when we receive Jesus in Holy Communion, we are united to him and to his sacrifice and we offer ourselves back to our heavenly Father through Christ. And we unite to him, you know, the suffering, the, the sacrifice, the the challenges, the difficulties, you know, the things that, that uh, make us die. Mortification is a kind of death. Our sacrifices are a kind of death, kind of martyrdom. Martyr, martyr ultimately means witness from the Greek. So anybody who witnesses to Jesus Christ ultimately is, an, is a martyr. And that's uh, what we pray for today as we celebrate this feast of St. Ignatius and, and recall his witness his extraordinary witness, really extraordinary. You know, the church was on fire with love for God. The martyrs ran to their deaths, uh, recognizing the great gift that they had received. And we need to be inspired by them and to pray for the fire that they had so that we will be generous, completely generous, and see things from Christ's point of view and recognize that St. Paul is exactly correct when he reminds us that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nobody, nothing, not tribulation or distress or nakedness or famine or danger or persecution or the sword, not principalities and powers, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. We are always um, capable of finding his grace and uh, finding uh, the power that he wants to give us to endure all things out of love for him and to uh, to to bring to fulfillment his plan for the salvation of the world. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Mm -hmm.